Welcome to Top 5, a show where we fly high in the sky. We shout mighty names and change into superpowered beings. And sometimes we just have that uh, that secret identity that no one knows about. I this is Top old 5. wizard gave me a magic acronym. There you go. <laughs> this week's Top 5 from one of our one of our fine listeners, Top 5 Powers we would want to have top five powers we would want to have. And part of this comes from one of our listeners who has been asking me multiple times over the last couple of months, if I've ever seen this uh, show called my hero academia, have any of you guys seen this? It's an anime. Yes. Okay. So Rodrigo has seen it. So one of the cool things about this is in this world that this uh, story resides, 80% of the world has what's called a quirk or a superpower. Uh, that defines them. And um, there's 20% of the people who don't. And one of the things that the people who have quirks want to do is they kind of want to get into, a, you know, a big sports franchise. They want a big uh, deal. And so they want to use their powers and make them the best that they can be so they can get the big contracts and be a superhero. And so we follow the story of one kid who starts off with no powers but then gets powers. And it's a pretty awesome power. And it goes for, I think, two seasons. My son is totally into it. But the interesting thing is there are some very interesting superpowers in that show. Uh, There's one guy who can drain your powers just by staring at you until he blinks. There's another guy who pulls sticky balls off the top of his head and throws them at people. (laughs) Uh, That's literally one of his powers. Is his name Stickball? I forget what is his name. Do you know, Rodrigo? I don't don't remember. Okay. But basically, he's got, I've got sticky balls and... uh, yeah, well, I won't get into yeah, how they, one day one of his sticky balls are a little extra firm, but they definitely uh, follow the classic like superhero tradition of being like everybody has a power, but like this person's power is having every potential power that a frog would have. Yes, right. It's like <laughs> what's what's your mutant? Pa- I mean, literally, like the X Men. What's this guy's mutant power? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, his mutant power is jumping and sticking to walls and having a really long tongue. Yep. And right. then there's another guy that has like rockets built into his calves so he can yep. run super fast. So that's oh, kind of sure. where this top five came from. So if you're listening to this and wondering, have Stephen or Rodrigo or Matthew ever seen My Hero Academia? Two thirds of us have. And uh, I kind of dig it. But uh, I read a little bit of the manga. Yeah, there is the manga, well. too, which I think uh, since it is the summertime, depending on when you're listening to this, it might be summertime where you're at. Um, I think to get my son to do some more reading over the summer. I'm going to get him those manga editions so he can read through those. He can read them right to left. It'll be awesome. I, that's what I'm hoping, but we'll see. Rodrigo, why don't we start off with you with uh, your number five power that you would want to have? Uh, my number five power that I would want to have is uh, telekinesis. Um but uh, not for any sort of, uh, you know, crime stoppage or um, self-defense or anything like that. I just want to not have to stand up to do things. <laughs> um, so, you know, how many times has this happened to you? You uh, sit down to watch TV and realize the remote is on a table off over there somewhere. And you just think to yourself, man, if only I could, like... Luke Skywalker that over. And by that, I mean either move it telepathically or just whine until somebody gives it to me. (laughs) Right. That's why I had children. Yeah. That's how I get my toast in the morning. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Your child has superpowers to make toast. Okay. Uh, Matthew, what do you have for your number five? Not superpowers necessarily, but, you know, instead of telekinesis, I can go, would you get me some toast, please? And then they're my number five actually is something that I feel really gets underplayed. And if you go on the internet and I don't recommend this, if you were to look for the list of the 10 worst superheroes of all time, not only will you have a scrubillion results, they will pretty much all be banal and insipid and include one Douglas Ramsey. The X-Men name is Cypher. His name is Cypher, just like the villain in the Matrix. And he has my number five power, the ability to read and comprehend all languages. So he can speak any language. He can read any hieroglyph. He can, uh, at one point, they're like, oh, computer languages count. He can key jack in Fortran. At one point, they're like, you know what else is a language? Body language. So he's now a master of the martial arts. And 
that's probably a step too far. But as we said during the what would we like to do or what would be a good long-term goal for us, things we want to do when we grow up, Mm -hmm. the ability to comprehend all languages would be fascinating. It would be amazing. It would be incredibly useful in my line of work. When people call me and they ask me, you know, in Tagalog, if there's anybody there who can translate, obviously I can now say, yes, I speak Tagalog. How may I help you? That would be awesome. And also no one who around me would be able to hear what I was doing would know what I'm doing. And so nobody could quality mark my calls. I would always pass my, my quality observations. So even just on the level of, hey, wouldn't it be great to read something in the original language? To read Love in the Time of Cholera in the original Spanish, or to go and see some of these weird old films that are all in French or, or Italian or Japanese that I've seen with subtitles or translations, and just be able to sit and embrace them the way they were meant to in the idiom and the language in which they were created. I think that would be fascinating. That would be an incredibly powerful language. And it's not steel skin or claws out of your face or being, you know, a walking jackass who is a a giant tumor. So it doesn't necessarily make a great superhero gimmick. But the ability to read and comprehend any and all languages is an incredible power that I wish I had. Cool. Uh, My number five is one that I wish I had every single day. I'm pretty flexible for someone who's my size and my age. But even when I was in my prime in high school. When you ran cross country. When I ran cross country track, all that stuff. (laughs) I still, there were still parts on my body that I can't scratch. I just can't reach around and scratch that one spot. So my number five superpower would be the ability to scratch every inch of my body to get rid of that itch. I didn't say it was a great superpower. I just said it was power that I wish that I would have. Because if you've ever had that itch that you can't scratch, it can be infuriating, especially when you're driving with a sweater on. So that's my number five. Hey, man. Hey. I didn't say they had to be great powers. <laughs> no, I'm, powers, I'm not questioning. I'm powers just, I wish I had. Like, why would you wear a sweater to drive? That's no, no, like, like in a, the wintertime when you're driving. It's driving sweater. That's my driving that's sweater. Come on. How dare you, sir? Good that's day like to a you. Recipe. I said good day. It has like a, it comes with a knit like aviator's cap and oh, yeah. goggles. And goggles, yeah. I do have an aviator's cap. Gloves. Never did get the goggles. Rodrigo, yeah. what do you have for your number four? Uh, my number four is uh, the power to have already cooked food. Um, Wait, to have co- food that is already cooked or to have in the past cooked food? To, to, have, that is it, cooked. to, to have in the past cooked food. So, like, really, I, I want the power to alter history, which would be a hugely impactful power to have but i would mostly use it to be like oh i'm hungry uh i can't afford to go out uh i wish i had remembered to throw out these pork chops and then i would just be like i did um and that's that's what i would do if i had superpowers is i <laughs> basically go back to last tuesday night so i could pay my phone bill on time nice that, that'll work matthew yeah. what do you have for number four My number four is one that I've wanted for a very long time. Um, And recently it's been more necessary than usual. I'm in my mid to late 40s now. I'm 46. And 2016, 2017 has been a very difficult year for me, medically speaking. Uh, Just recently, I actually had a tremendous fall at work. I mean, it was, I went and I talked to the safety person and she's like, I watched the video and her eyes had that look of, I'm surprised you're alive, fat man. But I've always had this thought in the back of my head that it would be great to have complete invulnerability to where oh, crap, the stove is too hot. What shall I do? I know I'll grab it. They can't burn me. I am invulnerable to it. Ha ha. Or that point. Well, where, you oh, know, so define invulnerability because I'm curious right. about this. Because do you mean like the inability I to cannot, feel pain, 
or the inability to have the effects of getting burned horribly by grabbing a a, uh, iron skillet without a glove on. I will still have the ability to feel. It will just not be the ability to get hurt while feeling. Okay. So let's say I'm washing dishes. I can still feel the dishes. I won't, you know, crush them between my, my meaty and vulnerable palms. But if I drop one and it breaks, I also won't get a slice of it under my fingernail and bleed for like a year and a half. Or I won't have that thing where, you know, and when I say invulnerability, I also mean I won't have that thing where I accidentally eat pizza with jalapenos in it and then my stomach bursts into flame and I feel like I'm going to die for the next three days. So basically what I'm just referring to is anything that would have a negative effect on my, on my health. I, I don't want. Okay. All so right. I'm I, just, I'm just curious. So if someone came at you with a flamethrower, you would feel right. the scorching burning pain, but you would come no, out unscathed. I would not feel the pain of that because that's a bad thing. I would be invulnerable to that. It would not burn me. And then I would take the flamethrower and I would bend it in half because uh, apparently you get super strength with invulnerability. But no, just that ex- that aspect of let's say you're walking. You're walking out of your workplace and some guy comes rushing up in a Dodge Charger and he hits you with his car. And you bounce off the building and you leave a U-shaped mark on the wall. And then you get up and you go, wow, that was incredibly stupid. Don't do that again. And you walk away. You are uninjured. You do not have a big swollen knee almost a month after you have that injury, not mentioning any particular names. So, again, as with most superpowers, there's a a general senselessness to it. Because Superman, for instance, is a man of steel, yet if Lois falls, he'll catch her. As though falling on something made of steel is less painful than landing on the ground. So again, I I want invulnerability, but only the good kind. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. No, that's fine. I mean, if we're talking about. I uh, cannot be harmed. Okay. If we're talking about um, powers of of questionable use, my number four totally has it. As we get older, Matthew, our taste buds change. Correct. There's also a thing that as we get older, food just isn't made the same way as it was when we were younger. Oh, for God's sake. Will you stop with the Pizza Hut? So my number four power (laughs) is the ability to make anything taste the way I remember it. (laughs) And this totally goes back to how Pizza Hut sucks today (laughs) and didn't suck 40 years ago. Remember when that sandwich was really, really I, good? Yes, this is how that sandwich tastes now. I really, I, I'm really glad that the power is uh, having things taste the way you remember them, as opposed to say being able to summon a like 1978 oh, piece gross. of Pizza Hut. Gross. No, I mean like. <laughs> Here's a piece of pizza right? that so, we've. Oh, okay. I was going to say, here's a yeah, piece of pizza I mean, that's like, been sitting around like for 45 reaching, years. Reaching into the past and getting a piece of pizza from the 80s or, or whatever you feel the heyday of Pizza Hut was. Because I would feel bad if you tasted it and you were like, oh, yeah, this is just fat and salt. That's what I was into when I was a child. <laughs> no, it, it, you know, you can't open a, a dimensional portal because, man, that could just uh, end all reality. I'm just doing yeah. something that's just for me. Right. This is a personal power for me that if I want to grab a Pizza Hut pizza and I want to taste it, how it tasted back in 1976, then that's how I want it to taste. Or if I want to eat that meatball sub or oh, even better, that Subway steak and cheese sandwich that I had in 1993, that was the best steak and cheese sandwich I've ever had. I want to eat a steak and cheese sandwich and have it taste that exact same way. Right, because if you reach back and steal pizza, you might steal it from yourself, thereby changing reality, you, and you, you might never no. know what it tasted no. like. No, you might steal it for someone who really needed it, and they they were going to go on and form a, a computer company, and because they couldn't get that pizza, they starved to death, and therefore, when you turn around, everyone's still ty- typing on stone tablets, and you got a little bird popping its head up going, it's a living. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> So you're saying that's why you don't mess with time. So we end up living in the Flintstones. That's why you don't. Well, you've always said that the Flintstones is post-apocalyptic. Yeah, it's in the future. Yeah. See, 
And if you're reaching into the past, what does today become? The future. Oh, good. No, that now it makes sense. Yes, Rodrigo, right. what do you have for number three? Glad you explained that last part, or else it would have been nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have for number three, Rodrigo? <laughs> My number three is uh, my number three superpower that I wish that I had is to have cool robots. Because mm. um, I sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I had cool robots. And I, I would really take any sort of cool robot, like either a helpful robot that was like beep, boop, beep. I will get that remote control from you because this is a different instance and you don't have telekinesis. Um or uh, I would even just take a like a snarky robot friend that I could Chelsea watch movies over with. Crush on Paul Schaefer and yeah, or uh, yes, that 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 takes me to tells me to move on. Uh, or uh, or you know, will watch uh, bad movies with me. Um, ha 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 ha! He yeah. said, "Don't speed bump." Rodrigo, yep. you are my best friend. Pretty much. I love you, Wesley. Um, that's a clone <laughs> high reference, kids. <laughs> yeah, we got that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've wow. never even seen clone high, and we get that reference now. We're 10 years into the show, boys. We know what's coming. <laughs> well, that's, that's what it was like. I, I would like to change this entry to the ability to come up with new references. <laughs> Hey. Well, shoot, there was my number three. Damn it. It's been done. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's my number three is Mr. Butler Tron. Somehow. <laughs> <a superpower>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Matthew, what is your number third, number three power that is not pulled from Sentinels of the Multiverse? Well, first of all, I've never played Sentinels of the Multiverse. I've just spent a lot of time studying the heroic archetypes. Oh, OK, in. OK. Which is perfectly fine. Oh, that's yeah. Act- yeah, work about the universe. But um, my number three has actually been through the most revision of any top five in recent memory because it started. Widget and I were talking about telekinesis, and I'm like, telekinesis is going on the list. And she said, no. And I said, why? She said, dad, if you were telekinetic, thousands of people would die in traffic when they made you angry. And it's true. Uh, So I can't have the ability to smash things out of my way with my mind because on occasion, I'm a a little bit impulsive. Well, listen, we didn't say that these powers had to be used for good. I mean, mine are for selfish reasons. Rodrigo's are for, you know, not bad reasons. reasons. Yeah, yeah. You've seen the movie Chronicle, right? There's always one kid, one kid who's ambiguous, one kid who's evil and one kid who's noble. And so Rodrigo it's okay if you want to be useless and I'm noble. It would be okay if now, you want to be evil. There's nothing wrong with that. We expect it from you. But I'm not going to do it because oh, okay. that would be evil. And then I thought, okay, I'll have mind control powers. And then I thought, no, I can't have that either because I am occasionally impatient with the universe. And I don't want, you know, to, it, it would be inappropriate to use your mind control powers on anybody. It would be one of those things where even if you're a good person, you have evil powers And the karma would come back and get you. So I came up with the perfect number three power because, first of all, it's another one that people have really, you know, kind of lambasted as stupid and awful. But it's also a really great power when you think about it. And that power is matter eating like Tenzel Kim, matter eater lad of the Legion of Superheroes. Now you're saying to me, Matthew, all I eat is matter. And that's true. But this would be the ability to eat any matter. Let's say there's a wasp nest in front of your house and you hate wasps as much as I do. What are you going to do? Get some spray and spray them. See, you know, that's bad for the environment. That kills the bees and the bees are going to come back. And eventually we're going to have to live in the world of carousel where we all have flashing red crystals in our palms. And that's a new reference. But no, it's not. The thing about, shut up. (laughs) He doesn't know that. The thing about matter eating that's useful is it's remarkably useful in situations where you don't expect it. All right. Say you're on trial for armed robbery. Uh Uh-huh. And you've got this gun. Yeah. Because, okay, 
what are you going to do? How are you going to dispose of the evidence? Eat the gun. Right? Well, hopefully that you would do that before you're, you're, <laughs> you're on, on trial. trial. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, I would like to submit evidence number 123A. This gun that was used in the... Ro- Wait a minute, where did it go? Matthew's like... Oh, no, 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 got me. No, no, no. Ah. Well, also, barring any evidence, I have to dismiss this case. <laughs> Let's say, for instance, you're trapped in a super log of space. Okay. And none of your friends can get out, but you have the ability to eat matter. So you can eat a tunnel that you can then climb through to escape and go for help. I think this I think, is a remarkably useful. Okay. Let's I think I would. You have a, I you, think people would Shrek you all the time. Like, like uh, Matthew, we are trapped in this cell. How are we going to get out? I will dig us a tunnel with my mouth. And then meanwhile, we're just like, hee the jail cell's not even locked. Let's go. <laughs> well, you see, you're the evil one. Rodrigo's the ambiguous one. And I'm nobly eating dirt to try and save my friends. But think about this. Uh, the other day, I got a spoon caught in the garbage disposal, right? Okay. Okay, so imagine you don't need a garbage disposal because you can just eat the spoon. You cut out the middle, man. You know how some people are like, oh, I have to buy disposable dishes because I don't want to do my dishes? Just imagine that instead of having to wash the dishes, you just eat the dishes with the food on them. Hey, now listen. No, I, I listen mean, to that, this. They're true. actually making plates and silverware where you actually yeah. do that. They're made out of a corn-based uh, fiber, and you just eat it. Yeah. You masa, your plates are made of masa and you eat them. And I think that this is, this is a perfectly good superpower. I'm and yeah, sure. On, and, and on one, there's one other thing that we haven't thought about. Okay. When it comes to matter eating, right? Okay. You know how Rodrigo wants to wish to have made food already? You wouldn't have to if you could eat anything. You could just eat the remote and Mr. Butler Tron. Yeah. And then you wouldn't be hungry. And you wouldn't have had to have made food. See, this is perfect plan. Perfect plan. My number three power that I wish I had, the ability to float four inches above the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Why four inches? Because when I'm going to bed at night, I don't have to worry about stepping on Lego in my bare feet. (laughs) It's a power. Uh, your, hey, look, uh, my powers may not get me into Superhero University. <laughs> or Hero High. Or Hero High. Or Zoom's Academy. But Sky, my I, feet will be protected, and thus, people will be able to sleep comfortably in their beds. I mean, you know, hey, uh, Batman's like, I'm protecting the city so you can sleep comfortably at night. And I'm like, hey, I float four inches above the ground so I don't have to step on Lego and wake up the entire neighborhood with my screaming and yelling. You're welcome, neighborhood. <laughs> I thought you would have gotten one of those cool pairs of like labeled branded Lego shoes by now. <laughs> no, they're no, shoes that say all. Lego. They're two things that are good. <laughs> are they made Plus, out of Lego? <laughs> I don't know. Probably eh, four inches seems like the, just the right height, right? I mean, it's just like you're a little bit taller. You're not like flying, especially if you're someone like me who's scared of heights. Four inches is like right there. Plus, you'll be six foot four. Yeah. Which means that you can always stand in the back row when you take family photos. Exactly. See? That's my number three. Which now brings us all to our number twos. Rodrigo, what do you have for number two? I don't feel like Steven's number three is just a segue. (laughs) (laughs) Literally a segue. It's Uh, yeah. (laughs) Which is kind of also (laughs) my number three. (laughs) Uh my number two is uh I want to be able to eat and do other things at once or or at the same time. Um, And this happens a lot because on my days off, I'm like, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I want to go play video games, but also I'm hungry. So I have to wait until I'm done eating so I can start playing video games. And that is just unacceptable. So I don't know if I need like an extra pair of hands or anything like that and it's the same thing when i'm like working you know it's like we've all we've all had lunch we've all had a working lunch right where you're working you're typing you're eating you're editing whatever 
and it's uh, you you have to stop what you're what you're doing to eat a burger, e- even if you're eating something that comes in small bites with a spoon. Even then, it's difficult to continue that workflow. So m- I would want to be able to eat and do other stuff at the same time. Uh, maybe I could just do that telekinetically if I had telekinesis or have an extra pair of hands or have my cool robot feed it to me. I don't know. Cool robot. You you need an extra mouth, though. So you'd have, like, two spare hands and an extra mouth to eat. Might as well just yeah, go for the extra they're... head and then become an extra on the Star Wars movie. Well, yeah, oh, then you'd so... have three arms and two heads. You could be the president of the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew, what do you have for number two? <laughs> My number two is actually a power that I have thought about for, for a very long time, uh-huh. a power that I wanted when I was a young one and a power that I think I'd be really good at because I don't know if you know this about me, but due to my amazing physical resemblance to a dugong, I am a phenomenal swimmer. <laughs> and so if I had the ability to fly, which is basically swimming through the air, you know, I'm not I'm not talking like, you know, telekinetic lift yourself up or effort thing. I'm talking like Prince Namor. I have three inch wings on my ankles and therefore I can shoot through the air like a damn torpedo kind of flying powers. I think I would be amazing at that because I'm aerodynamic uh, for one, but also because if you think about the the classic flying types you got your like your hawk bands with their wings and they have to move and turn that's not what i want like captain britain so you want to be the the dugon of the skies the sky dugon just kind of hanging out eating your matter just flying eating matter yeah exactly i would be like uh you know what i'd be i would be sebastian no what's the name of the thing the 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 (laughs) flying rug from a never-ending story what's its name Falcor? Falcor. I could be Falcor. And then, you know, little kids could ride up my back and we could go for an adventure. You're like, and even oh, though, man, you're so going to get arrested for that. Even though the first one never ended, somehow we have a sequel. Um, because, again. Well, they ran out of film for the first one, so you had to have a second. Is that one. what it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably what it was. Then it wasn't a never-ending story, and I want my money back. But more importantly, being able to fly would exacerbate some problems i think but it would also save that issue of oh i really don't want to walk the four blocks to my car after work i'll just fly to work and it's you know we're talking like whoosh, torpedo flight so and eventually, would we would like, we end up with twitter conversations from you that says man i'm too old to fly to my to my work today no i gotta wa- i gotta it, fly four blocks to my office i think i think we'd have conversations where he's like Oh, I should have put shoes on before I flew to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can fly, you don't actually have to touch the ground. And occasionally, think about this. If you can fly on your way to bed, you can hover four inches above all the Legos on well, the floor. See, there you go. See, but my child doesn't leave Legos on the floor. Usually it's like uh, at this point, uh, fingernail polish and some sort A cat. of removal. Yeah, well, the, the cat, jeez. So you're number two, flying. Flight. 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 All right. My number two, power. Again, this is useful only if you're, it's kind of like your matter eater lad uh, powers there, Matthew. Well, we all have an eating power on our list. Mine is cleaning up everything. Just like by looking at it, if things are out of place, blink. And it's where it's supposed to be. The dishes are clean. The floors are vacuumed. Mantles, TVs, everything is dusted nice and clean. Things are put where they be. That's what my power would probably be. OC, OCD. Uh, OCD is. Obsessive cleaning disorder. (laughs) No, not Jesus powers. That's my, that's my number one power. That would be the walking four inches above water. (laughs) As I just to Legos. Uh, sometimes the house just gets out of control. Messy. Yeah. Out of control. And you turn around and there's like six months of stuff piled up. And it's like, man, this stuff needs to be put away and it should have been put away and this should have been cleaned. And boom, I'm going to make it happen. Blink my eyes, dab my head, whatever the genie does, and everything's clean and put back. Again. Yeah, but you can't show your belly button. I could. 
So your harem pants have to come up above your belly button. Oh, my harem pants. They would also be four inches above my ankles so that when I'm floating, it really looks and, impressive. And before you do anything magical, you have to say yapple dapple. Yapple dapple. <laughs> <laughs> yapple dapple. Yapple dapple. <laughs> Who was the voice Usually of that? Was that Joe Besser? Yeah, it was Joe Besser. <laughs> you get a bowl of fruit. Oh, there's too much apple in my yapple dapple. <laughs> My number two, oh, it would be uh, similar to your, your matter heating where you can eat anything. Mine would be clean up everything. So that's my so number two. Class. Yeah. Matter cleaning man. There you go. Okay. We are now to our number ones, Rodrigo. And I think we've had some real winners so far on this show, which means yeah. everyone's number ones are just going to be spectacular. Real winners. By, we want to clarify the answers and not necessarily the panelists. Well, maybe that's someone's number one answer is I want to clarify all the answers. There you go. Yeah. I want to be the winner. What are you going uh, to for number one? That's not it. Uh, my no. number one is really the number one power that I wish I had, uh, like for serious. Like I don't always sleep very well. And a lot of the time what ends up happening is I have trouble getting to sleep. And then, you know, three, three to six hours later, I have to go to work. Um, so about uh, uh, later from the time where I finally fall asleep. So I would like the ability to just immediately fall asleep and kind of either be able to set a timer and then just like immediately wake up and have no like real grogginess um, oh, cool. so that I could be like, well, I'm like 10 minutes early to work. Just <laughs> for exactly sleep. 10 minutes. Yep, sleep just, yep. Just be able to sleep, wake up. And even if, you know, it's not uh, so you want like have it have it be as restful as it would normally. Uh, so wake up refreshed, lad. I, I guess, and it's like I, I would be okay if I had to like uh, spend it throughout. Like if I still need eight hours of sleep, that would be right. fine. But being able to compound that and be like, I have exactly three minutes right now where I don't anticipate anything happen at work, <laughs> and then wake code, up exactly three minutes later. Code name Napster. Yep. That's, yeah, pretty much it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then I could have a, a sidekick called Kidnapster. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody knows where he came from. <laughs> or where he's going. <laughs> really, really, when you think about it, most kid sidekicks for superheroes should just be called Kidnapster. <laughs> <laughs> this is my young ward. Where did he come from? I don't know. <laughs> What's his Nobody name? Cares. Kidnapped. He's rich. Oh boy. His parents used to be milk carton uh used to have a milk carton empire. Uh Matthew, what do you have for your number one? He's the fifth one this year. <laughs> <laughs> that Jason kid, we don't know what happened to him. Um <laughs> my number one fun. And again, I've been reading comics and in enjoying uh, the fiction of how do you say the escapist fantasy stories for a very long time, you see. And there's such I've had a lot of time to discuss what be the greatest superpower to have. And so I've chosen my number one with a caveat. And that caveat is simple. There are a lot of variations on this power in the history of people talking about powers. And some of the variations are really good. Some of the variations are really bad. The variation that I wish to have is super speed parentheses, Barry Allen style, close parentheses, because Barry Allen as the flash has super speed at a level that is, well, all of these powers are impossible. Let's not fool ourselves, but a level that is shockingly broken. Barry Allen doesn't just run fast. He has to literally warp the space-time continuum in his general vicinity. And Barry Allen does not exercise. Barry Allen is a scientist by trade. He spends his time in labs, so he is not a guy who has to go out and run and practice and get in a whole lot of running time to make sure that he's in shape. He just runs. I do not want like quick silver super speed where you run like 700 miles an hour and you end up winded afterwards. No, 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 no. I don't want Wally West super speed where you have to eat your weight in food and you can't even eat matter because that was your number three. 
I would like to have that super speed to the level where suddenly if something happens, your brain kicks into super speed and you're going super fast and you don't know why. And then you realize, oh, my God, somebody just fired a bullet into this theater and I have to find the bullet. That super speed that is literally slowing down the world around you and moving through it at a normal pace to where it seems like you're going so fast because everything else around you has essentially frozen. That's the kind of super speed that I would like to have because let's say it's 655 on a Tuesday and you forgot to read Wonder Woman the Circle. And you have now 45 minutes to read Wonder Woman the Circle, but it's clearly a 57-minute read. If you had super speed, you could burn through that in two minutes and still have time to watch the new Steven Universe. And that, my friends, is really the epitome, the epitome of, of superpowers, is the ability to do whatever you want and have all the time you need to do it because you're going so fast that no one realizes you were gone in the first place. You know, I thought uh, I, I thought a, lo a lot about super speed. Uh, believe it or not, as uh, <laughs> as the song goes, yes. Thank you. Um, Are you walking? No, that's Steven. So <laughs> I've always thought that that type of super speed would actually be very boring um, to perceive things to to slow down time and be like, I can run to work. Then you'd actually like actually be running, right? Right. Um, same thing with like, oh, I need to get through this like giant book. It's like you still have to do it. You get to do other <laughs> stuff as right. well. Um, so I've I've always thought like I, I personally would prefer the like you move very fast. Your reflexes still like react and everything, but you still perceive things at a normal speed because otherwise mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, look at how fast I'm going. Actually, you would have to perceive things faster because if you're like, hey, look how fast I'm going. Is that a wall coming? Boom. Well, <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, that's what I mean by the reflexes, right? It's like right. your eyes and your knees and everything is still working just like when you are uh, walking and then you suddenly perceive that a, a Lego is beginning to puncture your foot. You right. lift up your foot without really having to say, oh, no, it is a Lego. I better lift up my foot. Like your body just does it automatically. So that's kind of what I'm talking about is your body still reacts right. <laughs> at a speed that doesn't kill you. Um, so it doesn't kill you. All right. That's, well. that's a good point. You know, and in my day job, I spend a lot of time because my, my day job comes in little spurts of between eight and 25 seconds most of the time. And you have that thing where you're distracting yourself in between maybe by watching how I met your mother or whatever's on the Twitter at that moment. Yeah. I feel like to some degree, and this is going to sound incredibly douchey, so stick with me here. To some degree, my brain already kind of does that because that's the main reason that my Twitter feed does what it does every day at lunch, because I will be sitting there in the middle of a conversation and my brain will be going, hey, you remember Todd Holton, Super Green Beret? So at super speed, I'd just be able to do more of that. Yeah, that works too. And, sure. You know, I could right. think of two Todd Holtons. My number five power was making uh, Pizza Hut taste like the way it did way back in the day. My number four was to scratch every inch. Oh, I'm sorry. Four was scratch every inch. Five was make uh, anything taste the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean. Uh, number three was float four inches above the ground. Or is it three inches above the ground? I don't know what number I'm on. Uh, number two is clean up everything. These are all very important superpowers that everyone would be blessed to have gifted to them. So yes. you can imagine what my number one is going to be like. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. Telekinetically controlling up to three house flies at one time. No. Rodrigo, you got a guess? Um, to be able to uh, play the prisoners, the prisoner theme song in your head perfectly at any time. Mm. Or possibly to have speakers on your shoulders that play the prisoner <laughs> theme song. <laughs> Wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I know what it is. Okay. You can telekinetically <laughs> attract a toaster to your eyeball. Oh, now that would be a good one. But no, all of those are wrong. <laughs> My number one power that I wish I had, invisibility. Because sometimes you just want to be left alone and not be found. <laughs> <laughs> and invisibility is going to do that. 
Why would you want to be left alone? I mean, because sometimes I just want to sit in a movie theater and not have somebody try to jabber jaw at me. But what if they think you're not there and try to take your seat and then they sit on you? Then they'll go, why am I sitting four inches above? Oh, must be Lego on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Plus, there may be times where it's just like, you know, I just want to walk through the clothing department and looking at clothes, or I want to go to Best Buy and I want to look for something, and I don't need 50 people running up to me every 10 seconds going, can I help you, sir? Can I get a commission from you, sir? Hey, sir, can I help you check out, sir? It's like, no, I'm just looking. So if I was invisible... People would leave me alone. Well, wait, if you're invisible, what if you put something in your pocket at Best Buy? Is it visible? It also goes invisible, too. I'm not walking around naked. Come on. We've all seen how that worked for for, uh, the Invisible Woman in that Fantastic Four movie. Well, it worked for the Invisible Boy in the specials. Or no, in Mystery Men. Nope. Whatever I want to make invisible, anything attached to my body within four inches of my body. Will be invisible. Invisible. What? Is, why is it four <laughs> inches? Why not? Seems like a theme. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there are our top five powers that we would want to have. I'm going to go buy you a five-inch thick cable knit sweater so that I'll always know where you are when you're floating around. In no, I'll just have Rodrigo te- te- telekinetically float it around, and then I'll just be yeah, standing so behind you, going, Matthew. Mr. Butler Tron will tell me where you are. Matthew. Listeners, head over to Majorspoilers.com. We want to know what your top five powers would be. If you could have powers, if such a thing existed, if there was a quirk that happened to 80% of the world, what would your power be? (laughs) Share it at Majorspoilers.com at the podcast posting page for this episode. We want to read it. Other people want to read it. Why? Because everybody loves a list and we'll talk with you soon. This podcast is copyright 2017 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.